Okay, now we're almost at the end of sourcing images. I was just going to use the Google Auto Draw program just with the regular draw pencil using black to make some imagery just with my trackpad that I can add to some of the sources I found. So I'm just going to create some kind of rough and tumble line art, kind of comic booky, old comic strip to show what is called in cartoon language um, a brouhaha. A dust up, a conflagration. So, action lines, speed lines, little bruises, little punctuations of explosions of air, that kind of thing. And then, an easy way to get a high resolution image from AutoDraw, at least enough for screen resolution, is to do a simple screen grab of it. So I'm on a Mac, I do a targeted screen grab with Command Shift 4, and then it will go to the desktop. The other ways are you can click on Share within the program itself. And you can, you know, copy a link, and then you can put that link in. and then it will put it on the browser. But what's funny is it's actually, you can't make it as big as you can make it in AutoDraw. So that's why I recommend the, the screen grabbing. Okay, moving on. Now that I've got my references, I need to make sure I know where I can find them all, no matter how I sourced them. And so I've put them into a folder that's within my digital art spring 2021 folder. So these are the ones I got from Pixabay and from Google Images and any other source you might find. And then there are some I screen grabbed that went right to my desktop. So I'm gonna grab those, put those in. Keep them all in the same folder. I'm not worrying about the file names. I'm just worried that there, these all should be black and white, they should all be the right size. Notice that some of them are PNGs that have what looks like a gray background in preview, the Mac way of showing things. That means they're a PNG and they actually have an empty background. Others, like the screen grabs or this JPEG, will have a white background behind it. And my screen grabs, even though they might be PNGs in their format type, also have the white background behind it. So we're going to learn how to separate the line art from the backgrounds. OK, so the next step is to choose your favorite of these, kind of the essential, the beginning image. So this uses the, the Google Draw fist. I'm going to use the fist I got from Pixabay. So how do we start? We're going to use PhotoP. We're going to go to PhotoP.com. And if you wanted to remember your work, you can log in. So click on account. Do the free account and log in in how, whatever way you wish. I'm going to log in with the Digital Arts Lab. And now you'll see that the account is orange instead of red. And that means it will save my progress, which is handy. Though we're also going to download stuff. So I'm going to open from computer. And I need to navigate to my folder where I'm keeping stuff. I exercise one folder. And I'm going to choose that power fist, right? So notice when I bring it in, 
this was one of those PNGs without a background. So I see a checkerboard instead of a white background. What I also see is that it goes right to the very edge of the image and I wanna give it some more space. So what I'm gonna do is go up to image in the top of the, the options of photo P, this is the same for Photoshop, and I'm gonna to go to canvas size. And canvas size will show me how many pixels this is. And I'm just going to increase it by a couple hundred pixels on both sides. So I'll make it, you know, 1500 by 2200 pixels. This changes the canvas size, not the image. So it just grows space the potential for pixels around the image. All right, but if we follow the directions, we're gonna to wanna to actually change not just the canvas size, but the physical measurements of it. So we're gonna change it from pixels to inches, and then we're gonna set the width to eight by 10 inches. so that we all have a, a big enough working space. So I go to image size, or I go to image, I go to canvas size, and I'm gonna change it from PX to inches. And then I'm going to take it from what's 20 by 30 inches down to eight by 10. But there's a problem with that because it really cut my image down, right? If I just do Command Z, you can see that. But I'll redo it. So what that shows you is that when you bring an image into Photop, that image is made up of a set number of pixels. Those set number of pixels are expressed across a physical dimension. That gives you a number of pixels per inch. And that's what DPI stands for in Pixabay. Even though that's wrong, it should be PPI. It should be pixels per inch, not dots per inch. We'll talk about the difference between DPI and PPI. It's a very annoying mistake they've made in, in Photop. They don't make that mistake in Photoshop. But what we notice is that this image is 72 pixels per inch, which is a standard screen resolution. At, and so its physical inches are 18 inches by 26 inches. But if I change it to eight by 10, without changing the DPI, then it's eight by 10 at 72 pixels per inch, which means it's making the same image with fewer pixels than it was before. So I have what's called down sampled the image and made it lesser quality. So what we wanna get used to doing is setting a standard pixel space. And our standard pixel space is going to be eight by 10 inches, inches, not pixels, by 150 pixels per inch. And you'll see how it's changing here, even though I did eight by 10, because I have the, the chain link locked, so it doesn't warp the image. So go to image size, type in eight by 10, but make sure it's under inches, and then type in 150, then say okay. And you wanna check resample, click okay. And this is, this is also how we get our clip arts into the same size? Yeah, it's, it's going to be the working space that we bring all of our images into. And some of your clip art might already be that. Some of it will be a little bit smaller. Most of it will be bigger. Okay, now that I have something that's at 150 pixels per inch, now I can go to image canvas size and I can grow it to 8 by 10. Right, And then if I want even more space, you can always go above eight by 10 because I want a little bit more space above and below. So I'm gonna do nine by 12. 
but it should be at least 8 by 10 by at least 150 pixels per inch. So that's the difference between image size, which actually changes the pixels, and canvas size, which just gives you more space for the work. But that's not the only way we can play with the space. So I'm going to cut it back down to 8 by 10, as long as it doesn't cut off my image. And now I'm going to be using layers. So if I go to Edit and Free Transform, it will allow me, it makes a little box with these little squares in the corners of the box. This is called the transform box. I know we played with this a little bit in the first class. I want to shrink this a little bit so it's floating in my 8x10 by 150 pixel per inch space, but I don't want it to distort. I don't want it to get squeezed one way or the other. So how do I do that? If I hold down Shift while I drag it from a corner, it will scale without distorting. And then if I click in the middle and move, it will just move it. So I can center it and scale it down while holding Shift. If I scale it down and hold Shift, it will drag from the corner. But if I scale down and hold Shift and Option, it will scale from the center. So these are all ways of just scaling it. We're going to use a lot of free transform, which is under Edit, Free Transform. The That's shortcut it. is Shift Command T. This also allows me to rotate it if I want to. And then it gives me a shortcut into the other ways I can mess with it. If I right click within the transform box, I can warp it, I can distort it, I can flip it. I can do all kinds of things. But I just hit Command Z and it undid everything. Because when you do a transform box, by going to Edit Free Transform, nothing is permanent until you hit Return. So I'm going to set it up like that for now and then hit Return. Okay, now I've set up my working space. Now I can start bringing in more images not opening opening them separately within Photopea, but saying file, open, and place instead of just open. And that will place place them into the same working space. Now this one has a white background, but first I'm going to as it comes in, it gives me a, a transform box automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and use Shift and Option to scale that down a little bit. I can rotate it a little bit. But notice this image is different because this image has a white background. So how do I get rid of that? Well, I go under Layers where it says Normal, and I change that to Multiply which will allow the dark images coming through from behind. And they're on separate layers, so I can modify them, right? I did have an issue with, with Photopea. Uh, once I added on another layer after taking my layers to multiply, it yeah. would not let me lay them over each other. Will not let you layer them over each other. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do it with the others, and let's see if if maybe you can recognize what you were doing. So if I say file, open in place, and let's take this JPEG image, it puts it in. I can scale it. I can rotate it. I can flip it by right clicking. So maybe I want the bullhorn like this. But this image, I know already I don't want this guy. Not only do I not want the background around it, I don't want this guy. So what if I just erase it? What if I just use my, um, my lasso tool? Because this might be one of the issues, Patrick. Is when you bring something in from the outside, it comes in as what's called a smart object. 
and a smart object, and it will 